Greetings everyone, Yanatoko here, and welcome to my next Let's Play, produced by Nintendo. Oh, what could it be? Presented by Shikasato Itoi, as if I haven't written it in the title. <laughs> I wonder. This is Earthbound, the original game of course. Not the more well-known sequel, Earthbound for the SNES, Super Nintendo Entertainment System. This is the original Earthbound for the, well, it was released for the Famicom, 1989 sort of July 1989, I think June, uh, in Japan only, didn't get a worldwide release until 2015, where it came out as Earthbound Beginnings, uh, and that was in America and Europe. Um, so, you know, a trilogy of three games, and only one of them released outside of Japan, and that's Earthbound, and that never even came out in Europe. Anyway, this is a great game. It's not as good <laughs> as, as the sequel, but I really like it. It's kind of a sort of lesser known version, funnily enough, in a whole in a series of fairly unknown games. This even this one is considered more unknown. So I kind of think I'd like to sort of play it and show you because I think it's got some nice bits to it. And it's just generally quite good. It's basically a lesser version of the sequel. Um, this title screen is actually called Mother in Japan, I should say, with a gold logo, whereas it's red here. It actually loads in the Mother logo and then just quickly unloads it to load this one in here. It's a very nice screen though, just black with the earth spinning. It's very symbolic. It's like immediately all sort of uh, telling its story, like, you know, the, all about life and everything. It's quite nice. Anyway, so let's get started here. Okay, so three files. Do I know the controls? Start. So, in Earthbound, you know at the start, you can name the characters. Uh, there's like a don't care option, and this will be uh, Ness. But of course, in this game, he's called Ninten. Actually, he's called uh, Boku or something in some versions. So, yes. Ah, should I do it? Oh, <laughs> should I do full capital letters? You know what? I don't know. I, uh, let's not. Let's just go with regular things. Ninten, uh, it's kind of like the default name that was used in a lot of games, like Pokemon Red. The main character was just called Nintendo for ages. It's like the default name they had. Now here's something rather perplexing. There's certain names. Like, okay, so this girl, let's see, what do I want to call her? Hmm? Should we try calling her Kelly? Let's give her that name just to see. Yeah, it doesn't work. A character in this game has that name. Try again. So you can't. And use only capital letters. Really? Okay. <laughs> Hang on then. Back. Oh, previous. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna give Nintendo full caps because it wants me to do that. Nintendo. Obviously, as in short for Nintendo. So you can't name her Kelly. Okay. What if I try and call her, let's see, what about something like, they'll never come up with this, right? How about Ulrich? I mean, that's a really odd name. Not allowed, yeah. There's an enemy in the game called Ulrich with two L's, so you can't do that. Her actual name is Anna. So that's what I'm going to call her. The only way to know these names is if you know them from like the instruction manual. There's no way to know otherwise, it doesn't tell you. Oh, uh, the other boy's name, if this was Earthbound, he'd be called Jeff, right? Because it's so similar. But he's called Lloyd. Now Lloyd, obviously you could norm normally spell it L-L-O-Y-D, but it's actually officially spelled L-O-I-D. Although at one point in one of the Japanese versions, it's called Void. He's called Void. I found that out yesterday. It was so funny. Official name, Void. Okay, the last boy is called Teddy. T-E-D-D. -D. And also, the question we're all asking ourselves, why? Favourite food? You know what? I don't know if there's like an official answer for this, but I'm just going to put my actual favourite food because why would I not do that? Pasta. <laughs> Okay, so there we go. Nintendo, Anna, Lloyd, Teddy, and favourite food, pasta. Is this okay? Okay, scat! As Shikasato Ito would say. In the early 1900s, a dark shadow covered a small country town in rural America. At that time, a young married couple vanished mysteriously from their home. The man's name was George. The woman's name was Maria. Two years later, suddenly as he left, George returned. He never told anyone where he had been or what he had done. But he began an odd study all by himself. As for Maria, his wife, she never returned. A 
80 years have passed since then. So what, this is like 1980, late 80s? Okay, here we are. This is um an RPG game, I should say. Also, the controls are always, for me, have been really sort of laggy. Like, I press a direction, and then it takes like a second for him to move. Here we are, it's an ten in my room. So let's just go out here. What the heck? Oh my god! Attack of a lamp! Okay, first enemy. Lamp draws the... See, this is really unusual. Just a lamp for an enemy. So here's the fight system. Uh, and I guess I'll fight. Fight lamp. Nintendo attack. Smash! Smash attack. The first attack. Four damage. Lamp attack. Oh my god, it smashed me. That's not something I want to get out in public. Okay, so... So here we go. Smash attacks are really rare. It's like critical attacks in like a Pokemon, you know. So there you go. I beat the lamp. Got one experience. Whoa! Whole house is shaking. Okay, let's quickly go over here. Go in this room and oh my god, another lamp! Let's fight it. <laughs> it's got like a little face which I quite like. A lot of the enemies in this game have um, like well they're called clay models, but it's actually just like they're made of paper. So that I guess the uh, people making it knew how to make the sprites, which is quite fun. Oh uh, yeah. This fight, I don't think it's really possible to lose these fights right at the start. If you just fight every time, which is really all you can do, then there you go. And have a smash attack. The, the word smash sometimes changes colours based on what enemies are, which is, uh, I would think, quite a fun sort of thing. But yes, okay, let's see who this is. Although you'd think Nintendo would know who this is, considering he lives with her. Talk. Oh my, brother, our house is falling apart. Boo hoo! Well, I just saved your life. There was a lamp in here. Just saved you. Okay, let's uh, see. I've like, missed the door. Hi. What do you say? Help me! Okay, oh my gosh. It's like some sort of killer doll. Let's run over to it. <laughs> doll draws near. Okay, there's other options here, but I guess I'll get into that more as we go on. You, if you check, it tells you their stats, like if we have a look at this. Ah, oh, well, Doll's going first, and gets a, a red smash attack, because it's like the enemy. I think it's because it's red, so it was a red smash. Four, five, and then it stares back at you. So now we know, like, how much attack and defense power it has. Intense suffer damage of one. Intense attack. Doll suffer damage of two. Yeah, there's no action commands in this game or anything like that, it's just... Good old, this is a, it's a Famicom game, you know, NES game, it's all just menus, the kind of thing Miyamoto would hate. Although, of course, Miyamoto was involved in the development of this game somewhat. I mean, it was Shikisato Itoi who wrote the story, uh, but, it, you know, it was the mentoring of Miyamoto sort of helping out, so, you know, he was involved in it. It's a shame it wasn't released worldwide for years. Um, because it is really quite good, I think. <laughs> this is honestly, for the NES, this is one of the best games. Oh my gosh, I'm getting slashed in... <laughs> Slash loads. And there we go, I've defeated the doll. The doll doesn't move anymore. You don't kill things in this game, you just do that. And I've advanced to the next level. Okay, so fight has increased. That's just like attack power, I think. Um, speed, that's like just determines who goes first in the attacks. Wisdom. That's like if you can fix things. That, I mean, there's different things they do as you go through the game. Strength. Um, one of them, of fight and strength, one of them is for smash attacks and one of them is just attack power. I think strength is more likely to get smash attacks. Um, and then force. And then HP, of course, we know. If HP goes to zero, you die. And uh, there we go. The phenomenon has stopped for the moment. Okay. I'm back to sort of regular house music. Oh, let's talk to uh, this girl. <laughs> I was scared to death. Oh wow, check out what's hidden inside the doll. Okay, check. Inside the doll, Nintendo spotted an old music box. As the music box was wound up. In the Japanese version, there's no, <laughs> there's no crazy, like, LSD background. It's just, it's just, there's nothing. But they, for some reason, thought it was wise to add a crazy sort of uh, wavy background. So that's a bizarre little thing. Brother, here's some juice. You are thirsty, aren't you? Okay, thanks for that. So if we go to my goods menu. Oh, I've got a cash card. But yeah, eat. Don't be silly, you can't do that. Okay. <laughs> so cash cards for getting money out from the ATMs and orange juice. Um, this look function also was in the Japanese version. They added this just to be more useful. Orange juice, vitamin C is always good for a few HP. Ooh, a little rhyme. Uh, also, you can run. If I'm holding B here, you see I'm running. That was a debug feature um, that they decided right at the end to keep in the game, thankfully. 
Hi. Ninten, are you all right? Egad! Professor Egad, what is happening to our house? I wish your dad were here now. Maybe... <gasps> the telephone! Ninten, please, get it. Oh, it's ringing. What if I just run out? Okay, no, let's, let's answer it. Okay, talk. Ninten grabbed the telephone. This is your dad. Well, seems like a poltergeist. It's, oh, it's a poltergeist. Of course, he knows. Right, I'm not exactly sure how to... But your great-grandfather studied PSI. Or maybe it's Psy. I always say PSI for that. You might find something in the basement to help. But I left the basement keys someplace. Can't remember exactly where. Anyhow, son, you are my only hope. <laughs> Thanks. It's time for you to go on a little adventure. And explore the potential of your powers. Powers need... Oh, powers not to be taken lightly. Okay. Sort of odd English translations in this. Nintendo, go for it. But remember to come back and check on our family. Our family. Bye. Okay, yeah, if you talk to your dad basically in this game, it's just like Earthbound, you can uh, save the game. You never really see him, so it's just like, he's, he's the telephone. Nintendo, are you alright? Okay, she's just saying the same thing. So, now, at this point in the game, let's, uh... I mean, here's the basement, so... But you can't get into it. If you try and go in now, uh, the door is locked. So what do we do? Well, let's go out. And this is the other world. <laughs> it's Nintendo's house, it's quite small. But I like it. I, I love this little bit of the game, like the little path and the grass. Honestly, seeing this, I was like really young when I saw this the first time and I just thought it looked so good. Uh, it's like sign Nintendo's house. Here we are. Um, here's Nintendo's dog. I don't know if it's called King or anything. You can converse with animals. That's useful. Why don't you check me out? Bow wow. Bow wow, like in Link's Awakening. There on the dog's collar was the basement key. Nintendo got basement key. Okay, good. So let's go back in, and now my sister's coming downstairs. Uh, let's use it on the door. Um, so if we go to goods, and then basement key, use, there you go, unlock the door and went inside. And here we are in the basement. Uh, let's have a look, there's presents. There's not very many presents in the game, like in the overworld. They're not, they're only in dungeons. Great Grandfather's Diary. Uh, what do we have in this one? There was bread. That's a healing item, but you can also use it to sort of escape from dungeons. Uh, as I might show later. And it's better for that. Plastic bat! That's good. That's like the first weapon. So if we go to goods, and uh, well, let's look first of all. This weapon is okay for Nintendo. Use it! <laughs> use it! Okay, use. Nintendo equipped class, uh, plastic bat. So, now I've got it, and now you can't go on it again. There's no way to unequip weapons in this game, except by equipping different ones. So let's see if there's actually enemies in here uh, that I haven't found, I think. There you go. Um, rat. All the enemies in this game are very unusual things because it's set in sort of, supposed to be set in rural America or that kind of place. So if we fight him now, uh, it's damage of seven, so I'm doing more damage. Rat uttered dirty words. Nintendo's fight decreased by seven. Oh. Okay, so it's very funny like that, you see. It's not all just doing damage. Rat became quiet. You don't kill enemies, as I say. The rat just becomes quiet. Okay, so if we go out here again. Um, well firstly, if we talk to, uh, Minnie, what can I do for you? She's like, she can, like, um, store items for you, sort of like your sister, in her. Um, uh, I no longer need the basement key, so I'm gonna get rid of it forever and give it to you. Utmost care, yeah. Anything else to keep? Um, Great Grandfather's Diary, you actually need in this game, at least for a while, so we're gonna keep it for now. I like how the mum is the same colour as, like, the floor and the wall. Son of mine, you are braver than I thought. I can't let you go on a journey so famished. So yeah, she'll she'll make you food and it fully restores everything, all your health and uh, PP. PP being psychic powers rather than anything else. So there you go. Very, very useful early on in the game to just um, come here and talk to your mother. If it's, This is a hard game to beat without dying. Uh, you get money from enemies, but you have to get the money out of ATM machines. I mean, I'm assuming you've never played this before, but yeah. So... There you go, I'll save, and then I guess we can go out. I suppose we should look at the, uh, Grandfather's Diary, actually. Just like your mum, you never want to stop, or your mom. Please don't push yourself so hard. Slam! Okay, if we have a look at the, uh, Grandfather's Diary, use... The diary was, was hard to read, but opened up to this page. Password. The one who lost the tail. The forgotten one. The ship that sails. Ooh, okay. 
So, uh, with that, let's go out then, into the world. If you press start, you've got the world back here, um, which is very different from the original version, Podunk, um, was called Mother's Day. All the names, or some of the names, were changed from, like, holiday names, um, in the original to, like, new names. Like, um, the Union Station was, uh, Santa Claus Station. Uh, <laughs> there's other ones. Spookane was Halloween. Snowman's got the same name. Um, there's a desert called the Yucca Desert that was called Advent Desert as well. So if we walk along here, there's gonna be enemies, uh, that start to pop up. And honestly, it might be a good idea to just fight some of these guys to, uh, grind and sort of level up a lot. A uh, crow. Ah, <laughs> crow. It's so similar to what I found. It's quite funny. Crow, in the Japanese one, was holding a little cigarette. A little fag. But he, uh, he doesn't have that anymore. Because that's just... We don't want to inspire our children to be smoking with the birds. No, no, no. Oh, yeah, he can, st he can steal your stupid items as well. What a git. I forgot all about that, yes. There's, um, most of the enemies here are not too hard. Some of them are, like, right annoyances. There's, like, a snake that can drop magic herbs that's useful for healing. Um, but, yeah, the, the fights in this game can be quite slow. <laughs> but, yeah, you win. There we go. 18 experience. So, 15 to level up, as the dad said. So, I think I kind of want to get to level 3, because that's when I'm going to get a uh, new psychic power. So, yes, definitely, if you've never played this before, I recommend sort of fighting the enemies here. Wally draws near. Okay. Wally. They, Wally flew into a rage. Wally's offence increased by 8. So, honestly, some of the enemies here are quite hard. Uh, I mean, well, they're not hard, but if you go on just fighting and fighting, you're going to take damage quite a lot. Um, I'm not sure I want to just fill out these episodes with just fighting enemies all the time, but I mean, yeah. Also, I probably, I better, oh, he's, he tried to fly into a rage again, but his offence can increase. Um, I think I'm going to put like a little menu, like I did for Super Mario RPG, uh, showing, like, what the enemies have. Now, oh, so, hmm, I don't have much HP, I guess I've got to eat the bread, because otherwise I'm going to die, I think. Increase 20 HP. Um, otherwise you can use the bread and if you can like use it and put breadcrumbs down and then when you want to you can teleport back to the breadcrumbs is how it works. There you go, I beat Wally. So I think I might just level up here for a bit. Chances are I am gonna die at some point in this game. If you just walk around like this, you see, you're gonna fight something eventually. I'm holding B, you see. Or not. I guess we can go over here. Hi. Uh, who are you? Oh, what can I do? What should I do? Where can I go? Who can I see? What should I do? What should I do? My little Pippi is gone. Pippi? Like, <laughs> if you're going to Podunk, please tell the mayor. Oh, me, oh my. Okay, well, she's lost some guy called Pippi. So, maybe we should go after her. Let's go down here a bit more. Uh, if, if you saw on the map earlier, this is on the way to Podunk, which is the first town. Mother's Day in the Japanese one. Oh, on the Mother 1 Plus 2 translation that they did on starmen.net, um, <laughs> they, they kept all the names on that one, so it was still called Mother's Day. That was the first version of this game I actually played a few years ago. Did a poltergeist visit your house? It tore mine apart. Yes, so, <laughs> seems there's been a lot of um, ghostly goings on. You can go in houses like this that uh, have rounded doors, um, which is a nice little hint. So here's a, here's a mouse giant enemy mouse, or not an enemy. I am the noisy mouse. Some buildings you can enter. Oh, so he's just gonna tell me what I just said, yeah. Yeah, if they've got round doors, you can go in them. Um, although obviously they don't need round doors to leave. That's weird, it's got a round door for the door, but when you go in, it's rectangular. Hi, what do you say? Don't tell me you've been south to the cemetery. Not yet, but I get the feeling I'm gonna be going over there. <laughs> Hi. Someone must be controlling the dead. Yeah, this is a really odd sort of situation we're in. Just sort of ghosts attacking and things. Zombies maybe anywhere in the town. Oh, okay. Hi, what do you say? <laughs> be honest, you're a zombie, aren't you? No? Are you really a human? Yes. It's amazing you came here. Okay, let's just say <laughs> yes. There is no cure for zombies. Ah! And he runs away. He runs away, whichever is the opposite of the way you're talking to him, because I talked to him yesterday and he ran down, so that's quite funny. Anyway, here we are in, um, Podunk, so I think I'm going to end the first episode here. So, we got attacked by a lamp, 
<laughs> got the first little melody thing from uh, the doll, not sure what that's about yet, and explored down to the first little town. So in the next episode, maybe we'll look for Pippi, we'll keep exploring around and see what happens. Until then, thank you very much for watching, and ta -ra!